Ice Cube was with Tucker Carlson the other day, or was it yesterday? It was a ride along. And they stopped in, I believe, Ice Cube studio. Ice Cube, he, he's been on a chopping block in the Black community. Nobody likes him anymore. Nobody likes Ice Cube anymore. Is it because that he's not, he's open to talk to Republicans or he's just open to talk to anybody, anybody who would like listen and sit down and chat to him and talk about the problems that's within their community or within the black community. He's willing to talk to them, but he is not like in the black community only because he sat down and talked to the one well, now Tucker Carlson, but Trump. Trump and his administration. I don't know if he actually talked to Trump, but he talked to some of his administration. He got a bunch of backlash for that. And I like that Ice Cube is a free thinker. He doesn't go with the herd. And so this is the ride along with Tucker Carlson. And he was asking him a few questions about vaccines and all that stuff. So we're going to take a listen to this. Why wouldn't you take the vax? Um, you, you had a direct order to take it. You were told to take it. Yeah, I, I'm not real good with direct orders, but on a whole nother note. <laughs> um, I, but it was a command. I, didn't, I mean, they told. I'm sorry, they told you. I mean, they couldn't have been clearer about yeah, it. Yeah, it was pretty clear. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you take it? Of course not. Yeah, no, it, it wasn't ready. You know, it was six month, you know, kind of rush job, and and I didn't feel safe. But they told you you were safe. I know what they said. <laughs> I know what they said. And I heard them. I heard them loud and clear. But it's it's not their decision. There's no repercussions if they're wrong. But I get all the repercussions if they're wrong. Was, was it a tough call for you? No, it wasn't a tough call. You know, I wanted to be an example for my kids. You know, really make sure they didn't take it either. Show them that I, you know, I wanted to stand on my convictions and that I was willing you know, to lose $9 million and more because we've probably lost more, you know, since then. The idea is that people who stand on their convictions are heroes. They're brave, they have principles. You know, they're the people we look to for inspiration. But in this case, with this decision and these principles, you were not hailed as a hero. No. You were attacked. Why don't you get the vaccine, man? Hey, look, man, I just rather be myself then take that vaccine like you other three billion bozos. I never told anyone not to get vaccinated publicly. That was never my message to the world. I didn't even want people to know whether I got vaccinated or not. I was pretty upset that that even came out because you know, I was just gonna quietly, you know, just not take it and deal with the consequences as they came. Do you know anyone who was injured by the vaccine? I do. And they suffer every day and it's, it's hard to watch. Suffering in silence is not the answer all the time. You know, sometimes you gotta let people know what's going on so you can actually move the needle. Choose to be vocal. If it's true, why can't I say it? Uh, well, you can't say it because it is true. <laughs> there it is. Now that's the problem with the world today. That, so there's no penalty for lying. No one's ever punished for lying. It's only telling the truth. It gets you in trouble. Ain't that something? That's true. Yeah, that is so true. So there you have it. Ice Cube, he just felt like the vaccine wasn't tested and tried and sh look, it was too soon. Just like other people thought it was the vaccine. The vaccine was um, thought about too soon or they tried to issue the, out the vaccines too soon without doing the proper testing. Okay. So he he was penalized for that, for that because he is famous. He has a large, larger platform. And then they tried to make a mockery out of him because he wasn't, the, the problem is he didn't go online and said, oh, I took the vaccine and you should too. So like he said, he, he lost money just because of that, that whether or not he stood up, made that choice or not, or made it publicly known that he didn't take the vaccine, but he didn't do that. But he was still, he faced backlash just because of that. And he's also facing backlash just from talking to Tucker Carlson. Some people don't understand. Okay, I might disagree with you, but I can still respect you because we, we just agree. We're just agreed to be different. We have a difference of opinion. That doesn't mean I hate your guts. 
I just don't agree with you on this particular point. That doesn't mean I have to attack you. I have to insult you or I, I don't have to listen to you, to your viewpoints. And what's wrong with a healthy debate? But that's where we're at in this country today. We don't understand healthy debates. All we understand is mudslinging and calling calling people names just because we don't agree on certain things. The line is so deep in the sand. It's like, if you cross that line, we know where you stand. And that's what Ice Cube, he's crossed the line. So I'm not going to play this whole episode and I'm going to interject if you guys want to watch it. Just go on Twitter and type in Tucker Carlson. It's episode 11. And you'll be able to um, see the whole interview. So why would you be doing this of all interviews? I mean, you could do an interview with anyone. You're doing an interview with me. Obviously, you're, you're going to take abuse for doing that. Like, Why would you do that? Um, because I think it's silly not to talk to people. Um, I think whether we agree or not, right? that has nothing to do with it. You know, it's like this is what it's all about. Let's let's talk about it. Let's let's debate. And and you know, I've been shut Wait, out. That sounds like right wing extremism. And <laughs> what about ism? But, but but I've been shut out. You know, some some platforms will not have me on. Why? Um, they don't like that I'm you know an independent thinker. I'm not part of the herd. I'm not part of uh, the go along to get along gang, so to speak. So um, you know, I'm an outsider. And so, you know, I'm not part of the club. So I have to, I have to go places for, for one that I'm welcome yeah. and where I can voice my opinion without somebody, um, you know, saying I'm a bad person and that they never want to have me on their platform again. What, what platforms have? Before he gets to that, he's an independent thinker. He's not part of the herd. He's a free thinker. You have to respect people like that. Oh, not just because I'm going against the grain. No, you know, I don't I don't necessarily agree what they're doing. And that does that doesn't mean that I'm less less of a person because I don't agree with the majority. It's just like I, I just think differently than you. Not to say you're wrong and I'm right. I just don't agree what they're doing. I've been I've been I've been um you know, I tried to go on I tried to go on the view. They didn't have me on the view. Why? Um, well, a few of the guests just really didn't like where I was coming from. So, uh, or a few of the hosts, I mean. So that's what I was told by the producers. You know, I don't know if the producers was just copping out and using some of the hosts to to not have me come on and explain myself. But you'd be a good booking for them. I've been on there before. Yeah. You know, it's just when I've became an independent thinker, when I've, you know, I'm not. You know, I don't. I don't follow their uh, their brand of politics. I guess. But if you can't think for yourself, then you're not really free, are you? No, you're not. You're not. But I've been excluded. I've been excluded on Oprah. You know, I, I, on Oprah. On Oprah. Yeah, I've been excluded. Yeah, man. Um, I don't think you'd be the person Oprah would want to promote. I mean, you grew up in South Central. You were successful at a young age. You have dignity. You say what you think. Like I thought that was the goal. Me too. You know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, several of my, you know, I had a movie called Barbershop, you know, yeah, um, I remember that, that I wasn't invited to participate with the cast. I uh, produced a show called uh, Black White. Just imagine you're the producer of the show and, and you star in the show and they have, they call all the cast, but they don't, they don't invite you <laughs> because of your politics. How crazy is that? And he's, he's not, he look, Ice Cube never said, Oh, I'm a Republican. No, he just don't agree with the Democrats. <laughs> that to me, that is so wild for someone to say, Oh, the star of the show, we can't invite him because he he talks to Donald Trump. <laughs> to me, that that's to me that's crazy. And I, I just don't I can't put that together. And Oprah of all people. And Oprah was good friends with Donald Trump. Matter of fact, I don't know how old you guys are, but I remember like early or late 80s, early 90s, they were joking around talking about running for president. This is before Barack got really famous. So when, when did Barack get, maybe it was early or later than that. But anyway, whenever Barack was, uh, ended up getting elected, be, prior to that, 
Oprah Winfrey and Donald Trump was joking around talking about being renegades. Maybe this was in the 90s. Somebody put it in the chat. You know, when you get a certain age, everything runs together. But I remember that very specifically or vividly. Anyway, I just can't recall the year. So you 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 don't like this man because all of a sudden you don't like Donald Trump, but you guys used to be good friends. To me, it's so wild. Uh, and it was it was a very controversial show. And um, once again, they had the whole cast on, but I wasn't invited. So I don't know. I don't on know Oprah, what that's, on Oprah's yeah, show. Yeah, so I don't know what that's... Really but Oprah is obviously a saintly, godlike figure who's revered by all decent people. Why would she exclude you? I really don't know. You know, that's that's something that I would love to find out. But I, I don't. I can't tell you, you know, if there's a single thing that I've done or said to her. Have you noticed that it is more controversial to criticize Oprah than to burn the American flag? Really? Seems that way. <laughs> I've never heard anybody criticize Oprah. Do you think it's political or do you think it's deeper than that? I, don't, I mean, you're not like a right winger. No. no. No? You don't even seem that political. No, I'm not really. I'm pretty much, you know, um, just want to do right by the people, you know. So if that comes through political means, that comes through the private sector, wherever it comes, you know, uh, I'm down to work with whoever's down to do something right for the people. So I remember reading you say something along the lines of, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a Trump voter. You actually attacked Trump at one point, but you were willing to meet with Trump. Do you think that crossed the line? I think some people didn't like that, um, but I think it's idiotic. You know, enemies meet. Right. <laughs> you know, they, they talk. I'm pretty sure there's some communication between Russia and the Ukraine right now. Somebody's on the phone talking to somebody, trying to, um, to come up with a, a solution. Um, so we just got to talk. That's the only way we're going to work this out. You know, I know when the talking stops, the fighting starts. You know, a lot of people, they, you know, think I'm a, you know, Republican. I'm, I'm a right winger. Um, just because I was willing to speak to the Trump organization, administration, I mean, and I was willing to speak with the Biden administration as well. You know, um, have you one guy in the administration, but it didn't go anywhere. You know, it was basically a, you know, take my temperature kind of call. Biden, Biden administration doesn't want to meet with Ice Cube because Ice Cube actually has a plan and it's a real written plan. He's not a you know about the okie doke. So when you deal with Ice Cube and, and as a successful person as he is, um, he gets a lot of stuff done, a lot of stuff on the ground. So when you deal with him, you can't just say, "Oh, um, yeah, work on the plan. Work on the plan and get back with me." But he already had a plan. So he wants substantial or tangible things to be done. And so when you talk to the Biden administration, they're all fluff. Like, oh, we're going to hold this care sticks, like the reparation thing. Oh, look into the reparations. Look, look and do some investigation. What is there to investigate? If Democrats wanted to give you some money, you would have already had it. You would have already had the money. Slavery was done. Slavery was over in 1865. I mean, you got the years of all other stuff that they did to black people, but literally, slavery was over in 1865. If they wanted to give you money, you, your ancestors, would have had it by now. So what? What is there to investigate? I, I just don't understand that. So it's just like this carrot stick that they want to dangle along so black people and black women could be like, oh, they're looking out for us. Oh, they're going to give us this. They're going to give us this. No. And then you have this black man. He, he is very successful. He wants to see some tangible items done for the black community. So that's why they don't want to meet with him. You can't, you can't put it on, oh, he... He was saying at the police and, um, you know, because he's a gangster rapper. You can't put it on that. Because you you meet with Cardi B. You know, you was plugging in Cardi B and all this other ratchetness. People. But you can't, you can't meet with a producer, a successful business owner. Uh, this dude started a whole league. A whole basketball league by himself. 
you know, I'm pretty sure he has some help, but literally by himself. He's been running this league for nine or 11 years. So he wants tangible things. So that's why they don't want to meet with him. Because he got his shit together. He, he ain't for the fluff. So people better wake up. We'll get to it. Like, but, you know, they they never got to it or never planned to. As a matter of fact, the guy left the administration. So you know, after after talking to him for a year or so, he was gone. And then, you know, we were left really with no one to, to continue the conversations. What do you think of Biden? I don't think he's giving the people who put him in exactly what they thought they were going to get from him. Um, but his most loyal voters, according to the polls anyway, are black voters, particularly black women. Mm -hmm. And those numbers don't seem to change. So no matter what happens or doesn't happen. So do you expect they ever will change? You know, whether they become independents and not vote for anybody who's not bringing it, you know, it's like people want your vote. Um, they have to do something to earn it. If they don't earn it, why are you going down there and pulling that lever? Because the other side hates you. That's the that's the pitch they make. We, we may suck, but the other side hates you. Um, you're supposed to dance with the person you brought. Yeah. You know? And the person that, that 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 brought you to the dance, you guys are supposed to dance together. And if that doesn't happen, you got to go find another dancing partner before the night is up in the music. That analogy, I mean, if everybody used that analogy in politics, you, I mean, we probably wouldn't be in this crazy stuff that we're in now, especially especially black black Americans. You're supposed to dance with the person that you brought, okay? Um, if you you go to the dance and this guy took you to the dance and you never dance, by the end of the night, you're going to be like, shit, I, I want to dance. Uh, hey, baby, you mind if I dance with you? <laughs> you brought me to the dance, but we ain't dancing? So normally you find another partner by the end of the night. And then your original partner or supposedly partner probably be, okay, so... I always say, take a crap or get off the pot, especially when my girlfriend's talking to me about their relationship. Hey, take the crap or get off the pot so somebody else could come in. <laughs> you know, it's like, why are you wasting your time on somebody that's stringing you along and ain't doing nothing? Because you're just so used to being crapped on or used to not getting nothing. Six stops. What do you think of Kamala Harris? I mean, obviously, she's a great politician to be able to become the vice president of the country. Um, I don't know how effective she is at her job. What's your view of the police at this point? Um, it's the same. You know, they <laughs> it really is. You know, it's, 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 it's like looking at like, what's your view of the military? Like, they're the military. They're always going to be the military. If I asked you this in 1946, you'd be like, they're the military. Yeah. So it's a fraternity. It's an organization that does things a certain way. And I think their philosophy sometimes is detrimental to the people they're serving because I think cops have a win and make it home philosophy. Win whatever battles you have in the street, make it home at night. And that's, that's actually the most important thing. And everything else, people's rights, doing things the right way, you know, being totally fair and square all the time and not, you know, being a little aggressive, you know, um, all that comes second to win the encounter, make it home at night. And you can't really fault somebody for thinking that way as a police officer, but that's the philosophy. So everything else come second to that. So guy might not care if he violated your rights. He's going to win this encounter. He's going to make it home tonight. And that's all that matters. And sometimes I think that's what we see is uh, an organization hell bent on winning and not a, and not a fraternity or organization hell bent, hell bent on upholding the law and doing anything right or by the book, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And it's just the nature of that fraternity. Maybe of organizations. Yeah, you know, it's, they, 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 they come with a philosophy and, you know, you can try to buck it if you want to, but more than likely they're going to get you out the way and stay in formation. Do you think that it's harder to be a man in America now than it was when you were a kid? Yes. 
saying what you feel, being yourself, um, is, is what they call toxic. You know, we shouldn't be, um, called toxic for, for our instincts and for, you know, I was born this way. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. why can't we be ourselves? We were born this way too. So the you, you hear that? Well, going back to the police, I, I like his um answer that, uh, okay, this is like a fraternity. And I think it's with every organization, but he's not saying at the police, you know, he, it, I believe he feels differently about the police <laughs> to tell you the truth, because, you know, now he's on the other side of the law, <laughs> you know, but I, I remember watching a show with Ice Cube and this wasn't it wasn't too long ago where he said he was making a bunch of bad choices and he was lucky that he never got caught up in the system. So. As far as the police goes, you know, you need them. And of course, if I was a police officer, I would be, hey, I need to make it home with my family, you know, um, doing right and fair. I would try to do everything right and fair. But if I feel like it's a bunch of BS, okay, maybe I'm, I'm not right and fair. <laughs> maybe maybe it's, it's a different situation. So like I said, police officers, they it's a different job or task that they have to endure because they, they're, they're a public service. And they have to deal with a lot of people and different people. So anyway, that was a good answer for the, about the police. But the, the next thing he talked about is, um, is it harder to be a man today than it was like 30, 40 years ago? And I, I'm not a man, but I think it is. And the only reason why I think it is is because of his answer. You, if you're a man and speak up, just you know because you you are a man and you making the decisions or whatever um that's toxic masculinity or even if you're a man i noticed that some females be like oh i wish he'll share his feelings with me he doesn't talk to me blah 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 i don't know um because he's a man <laughs> he's not gonna pour his heart out to you and say oh i had a honey i had a hard day at work Ugh. like no that's if you don't want a man that's like a bitch man <laughs> you don't want a man like that so I think I think he's right. I think you know when you are an actual man and you stand up for what's right, you draw the line in the sand and you put your foot down. Um, that's all the illustrations of what we know today is toxic masculinity, and I don't think it is. Um, and one thing I think um, that we're suffering today with this whole toxic masculinity or ill emasculating the man it starts in schools i don't know if you guys have boys and they kind of run run bunches you will be very surprised how 70 75 75 percent of the teachers are white women and, and this is nothing against white women but it's just a statistic they're women period so 75 percent of the teachers are white women this is, doesn't account to the other women that are teachers and just imagine, you, you're having teachers teach over your kid, and if you have a boy, they're not used to boy energy. And so I had to tell one of my teachers, um, one of my son's teachers, um, because he was kind of like being aggressive with the other kids, and she was trying to say, oh, maybe he has a problem. I said, no, maybe it's called testosterone. <laughs> like, you know, guys are aggressive. I said, he roughhouse with his brother at home, he's not going in and getting into uh, fights or anything, but that's what boys do. They they talk crap to each other. Sometimes they get mad at each other. They wrestle and they fight, but they can't deal with that in school. Like in school, they will try to put your kid, that something's wrong with your kid. It's uh, maybe they're, they got ADHD. They, they will try to label it and put it in a bucket. And I said, it start, and I'm saying it starts at school when they're doing this to kids to be less aggressive less of a boy i, I could say less less of a boy uh type in the chat let me know if you agree or maybe i'm just way off base <laughs> like shawan you're in la la land but i i just really firmly believe that they're trying to emasculate boys at a very young age they, they're trying to neutralize them at a very young age i'm not real religious but Bishop Tabard Swan, I think he's 
um, Church of God in Christ. Only reason why I want to talk to, to talk about him is because he's supposed to be a man of God. I, I follow him. Well, I guess I don't follow him. He's always coming up on my feet. And but I think as a man of God, the stuff that he spews out his his tweets is so hateful. And I wanted to highlight a tweet because since Ice Cube was on Tucker Carlson, he has some hateful stuff to say about Tucker Carlson. And um, and I don't know if you I've I've seen worse from him, but He's a, he's a very hateful person. And I'm speaking of Bishop Talbert Swan. Uh, this one tweet he posted, Black people don't need Tucker Carlson to criticize other Black people. Don't need Tucker Carlson. I, I don't think he Tucker Carlson was criticizing other Black people. I don't know where he gets that from. But then he wrote, basically, Ice Cube gave Tucker Carlson a impasse. He emboldened Tucker to spew his racist vitriol and to use his comments for cover. You guys said, we just watched the interview. Did any of the things he said or asked Ice Cube, were any of those remarks racist or just you thought it was for black people? Put that in the chat. I'm kind of confused. Um, so, but Tucker Carlson is quote unquote supposed to be racist. And that's because he's conservative. So he has to be racist, right? Um, and that's the same thing that they had to say about Donald Trump. Oh, since he didn't run Democrat, for the Democratic Party, quote unquote, racist. So we got to say he's racist, but he hasn't did anything to say or to make you think he's racist. But that's the thing that they want you to believe. OK, I don't care what our criticisms of Obama or BLM is. White supremacists, trash like Tucker, don't get to talk about them in our faces. So we are. And I made this a point a long time ago. So you mean to tell me the Black Lives Matter movement had white people involved and black people involved. A lot of white people gave their money to Black Lives Matter. Um, so since this is a organization for everybody, right? For particularly if benefits, supposed to benefit for black people. We can't say anything bad about it because you're a different race. We can't call up trash or we can't say, oh, this person is a schemer because they're black. Is that what Bishop Talbert Swan is saying? This, oh, we can't criticize Obama. Obama is not just the black president, the president over the black people. Obama was the president of the United States. And last time I checked, the United States were was, what, 70% white? Maybe less, maybe it's 60% now. 60% white and other races, 13% black. And then you got other races in between. So we're saying that we can't talk about Obama because they're of another race. This is what I'm saying about him. Um, I challenged Tucker Carlson to roll through South Central LA talking grimy about Black people without being escorted by Ice Cube. Um, and, you know, people are giving pushback because Tucker Carlson wasn't talking grimy. Uh, someone's put on there, what is this supposed to mean? LOL, man, you you bigot way too much. And he is a bigot. Like, he's he's really mad that Ice Cube is um, sat down with Tucker Carlson. All I... I'm all for Ice Cube criticizing the Democrats and agree that there is a lot of critis a uh, lot to criticize Obama for regarding the black community. However, slamming the nation, first black president to pleasure your vir virulent white supremacists like Tucker Carlson was absolutely pathetic. And then you got some people, he was always suspect. Um, some guy put on here, Malcolm X warned us about racist white liberals and they flunkies like black LGBT. They are sent to undermine the interests of African-American community, which they are. I believe that. Uh, newsflash, black people can be conservative. Yeah, newsflash, black people can be conservative. They don't have to agree with you. Thank you to G. Dennis uh, for your continued support um, and all the rest of you.
If you want to continue to support this channel, you could always like, subscribe, and share this video or cash at me. It's always greatly appreciated. All my good to you. I will talk to you soon.